I wanna dig right into guitars on today's show. In fact, I wanna ask you a question. Have you ever run into a guitar that you thought was gonna sound one way, but sounded completely different after you had a chance to actually play it? Well, the guitar I've got for you today did that very thing to me. It's the Emerald X30. Emerald has been carving out its own little piece of the carbon fiber instruments pie by making some amazing instruments. They have all sorts of different body shapes, all sorts of different styles, and multiple, multiple varieties. I'm talking six string, seven string, harp guitar, 12 string guitar, they've got it all. And just recently they released the X30, which is a jumbo carbon fiber guitar. And I gotta tell you, this thing really surprised me. More on my personal experience with the instrument in a second, but first, here's Alistair Hay of Emer Emerald Guitars unveiling the Emerald X30. Excited to be able to show you the, the latest X30 model. Uh, this, is a, this is a big jumbo. Uh, there's no other way to describe this but big. And, uh, you know, whenever I was setting out to, to build this, I wanted to design a jumbo that just had a big, big sound. Uh, you know, that's what a jumbo is supposed to be. Sounds big, is big. But eliminate an awful lot of the problems that jumbo guitars have. So, um, really, I guess to go into the features, it's 17 inches uh, right across the lower bout, and it's uh, five and three quarter inches deep. So it's deep and wide, but that's where it changes. Carbon fiber really allows us to make something that's very, very comfortable. So it's got this arm bevel, uh, it's got a, a really deep rib bevel here. It's got this asymmetrical body design here and a very deep cutaway. And, uh, and what that all combined does is it just makes it feel way, way smaller than it actually is. You know, if you had a really big jumbo guitar like this, uh, normally it's, it's cumbersome to play, but this, with these subtle designs, really makes it tuck really well into your body. Uh, the heel design is designed here for really maximum comfort and playability. Um, we've taken away all the heel access, so uh, this carbon fiber structure makes a really strong and rigid area, and uh, and get your heel right the way up the neck. So that allows you to get, you know, pretty much right up here to the 22nd fret, um, even though it's a 12th fret to the body. So high access, really, really strong, sturdy guitar. And actually, because it's 12 frets to the body, we've actually, we've increased the body length quite a bit. So we've been able to, to put extra up here. And, um, and it's a big sounding guitar, you know, really big, warm basses. Now that's a great spec rundown from Alistair, but you might be wondering, how does this thing really sound? I mean, it's carbon fiber, it's a jumbo. Well, I've got good news for you because they actually sent it to me. They sent me an X30 with a quilted maple veneered top. And I'm excited to share my experience with this guitar with you. In fact, I took it on a road trip to Salt Lake City, but there's a specific reason why I went to Salt Lake City. You'll see that here in a second. Come along with me for a road trip. all the way to Salt Lake City because we're gonna review the Emerald X30, which is a monster of a carbon fiber guitar. But seriously, we came to Salt Lake because we're gonna go see Slipknot. All right, we got the slip knot out of our system. It was awesome, but my neck actually hurts from head banging too much. <laughs> Time to review the Emerald X30. The X30 is a monstrous jumbo carbon fiber guitar. This one has a quilted maple veneer done in kind of an amber burst finish to match the amber colored carbon fiber weave on the back. Now, although this is a big guitar, it actually is pretty comfortable. It's got the arm bevel on the lower bout and on the back, it's got a little bit of a rib bevel so it sits nice in your waist and a super deep cutout. Match that with the Goto 510 tuners, which are super smooth, Graftec nut, Graftec saddle, you've got a hell of a guitar. too big for me. Dad, I think I'm gonna let you handle this one. Thanks, Aiden. I'm gonna take the X30 to the studio because it absolutely excels in a studio environment.
For being a jumbo guitar, the Emerald X30 is super comfortable. Between the arm bevel on the front, the comfort bevel on the back, and the super deep cutout, it doesn't feel as big as it is, but it certainly sounds big. I really enjoy this guitar playing fingerstyle in kind of a percussive way, but I also noticed that if I used this guitar in conjunction with a thinner pick, I was able to pull out the most tone and actually the most volume, which is ironic because I love playing with a thick pick. But when I attack this with a thicker pick, it didn't quite respond the way I thought it would. So I gave it a shot with a thinner pick and it was like a match made in heaven. I'm super impressed with the folks at Emerald Guitars. They're constantly innovating and developing new models and doing their take on classic shapes like the jumbo. In fact, if you like jumbo guitars, but you don't necessarily love wrestling with a big guitar, this is a great compliment because it is super comfortable. In fact, when we were done filming a couple things at the hotel room, Aiden kept playing and he said, Dad, I think I can actually play this guitar. And I think he was just intimidated by the fact that it was called a jumbo. And I said, whoa, Aiden, this is a big guitar. So all in all, again, I'm ultra impressed. And I think if you like that big sound, if you like carbon fiber instruments, this is one you should put on your radar because it's a pretty exceptional instrument. All right, I wanna thank the folks at Emerald Guitars for shipping that guitar all the way out here and letting me give it a shot. And also for it, learn, it teaching me a, a valuable lesson about pick thickness. I learned that you know, if, you, if the guitar that you receive isn't necessarily jiving with you, you gotta try some things to see what pulls the best tone out of it. And in this scenario, the thin pick was a great match, as I mentioned in the video, and it's just a really awesome guitar. The X30 is comfortable to play and just a stellar sounding instrument. So to learn more about the Emerald X30, please visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT104. You can learn about all the specs, see all the different custom options. And I also mentioned that previously on Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 27, we featured the Emerald X20, which is like the little brother to the X30. And then back on episode 29, we featured the Amicus, which is a tiny little, um, call it a short, uh, short scale 12 string that almost sounds like a mandolin but you play it like a guitar so if you like carbon fiber stuff there's a couple different options for you to check that out okay last week on acoustic tuesday we listened to the beard decaphonic sidecar we got a visit from brendan and toby from las vegas and you heard a very heartfelt message from keb mo this week on acoustic tuesday you already learned about the emerald x30 we're going to listen to a music geek podcast hear an unconventional guitarist and we're gonna to talk to our bearded brother about a very hot topic when it comes to your guitar's health. That's all coming right after this. I'm Tony Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 104. This is the show where you're gonna learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week. But before we do that, let's go ahead and do a little bit of guitar geek trivia, shall we? Here is your question. Which guitarist founded the record label Wyndham Hill? which specialized in instrumental acoustic music. Was it A, Alex Degrassi, B, Michael Hedges, C, Robbie Basho, or D, William Ackerman? Go ahead and ponder that, and at the end of the show, I'll be sure to give you the answer. Now, before we dive into the rest of Acoustic Tuesday, I do want you to know that Acoustic Tuesday is brought to you by Tony's Acoustic Challenge. Are you tired of playing the same handful of things over and over? With Tony's Acoustic Challenge, you'll have more fun with your guitar while getting better in the process. This is done with an innovative method I call dynamic guitar learning. Log in every day to find a super fun 10 minute guitar challenge that rotates between the five essential categories of guitar improvement. Here's a recent five star review from Lori B. This is a great strategy for encouraging daily practice. Tony is excellent at explaining both major concepts and subtle technique tweaks that make playing easier and more fun. I've been playing for years and at advanced beginner slash early intermediate level and find these lessons tremendously helpful. I started out watching Acoustic Tuesday on YouTube and with his casual style and nice sense of humor, decided to join up. Having a community of learners to share comments, videos, small wins with is also great. Keep up the good work. We are having a blast. To see why Tony's Acoustic Challenge has a 4.9 star rating from over 574 reviews, go ahead and visit guitarchallenge.com or go ahead and click the link in the description below. All right, we've got a juicy guitar geek list for you today. And when I say we, of course, I am not here alone. Joining me today is none other than Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr., the first also known as Egon. Noah, how are you doing today? Tony. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm doing great. Do you want to do you want to share with the good people um, why it is that you were referring to me as Egon today? Uh, yes, I do. Um, because Noah, I was making coffee earlier this morning, and Noah walked in to ask me a question. A question. Question. <laughs> <laughs> Noah came in to to ask me a question, and I looked at his hair, and he had this like little strand coming down with a curl in it, and I said, "Dude, you got the Egon swirl going." And uh, it just kind of stuck. And I, I made myself laugh, and I wanted to share it with you all. Huh. Okay. I thought that's cool. I, of course, it, people generally tend to go for the, the Superman curl. Oh, but yeah. But I really appreciate that you went <laughs> Egon, especially in the cartoon version of well, Ghostbusters. <laughs> it just hit me. And, you know, if, you, if you're ever wondering how to um, ask Egon a question, you ask him a question. <laughs> that's what you do. Yeah. You ask that's, Egon a question. That's good. You you poked a little fun back at yourself. Yeah, yeah, I have to do that. I, it's been a rough day with words, uh, Noah. I almost <laughs> did call you Egon right there. Uh, it's been a rough day with words. Uh, we've tried the intro numerous times, and I'm just a stumble fumbler today. So we're just going to have to see what happens. It's going to be a surprising and eventful show, and I am super excited. Well, Noah, um, we did get a uh, recent visit from our buddy in St. Louis. Are you aware of this? <laughs> uh, yes, I was here for that. <laughs> oh, that's right. You yeah. filmed everything. And I, I filmed forgot. everything. <laughs> so, yes. Well, uh, right before the Acoustic Life Festival back in June, uh, Matt C. from Eddie's Guitars paid us a visit, of course, because he was going to the festival. But we also had uh, a little bit of chat. We chatted about many guitar things, one of which could save your guitar. In fact, he shed some light on humidity and also... Um, well, he yelled at me. So here's a segment we like to call Ask Matt, where Matt scolds me. And uh, without further ado, here's Matt. So Matt, you were just over at my house, and I was showing you my Thompson guitar, <laughs> and I was scolded, scolded by you. I thought I did it tactfully. It, it, it hurt. It, uh, hurt. Well, it hurt more because I felt like a neglectful parent. Uh, you commented. Truth, the, truth hurts. Yeah, truth. <laughs> you commented about the humidity, or lack thereof, of my uh, Thompson DCMA. That being the topic, the hot topic of the day. What is your approach to humidity? How do you keep your guitars humidified when they're at home? Uh, well, I'm, I might be in the minority here. Maybe I never leave my guitars out mm -hmm. ever. You know, I don't hang them on a wall. I don't have a, a rack stand or anything. Um, it would be cool. It'd be convenient to have that. I'm not saying I don't want that. I always case my guitars though. Yeah. When when I'm, you know, during the summer, I, I I haven't really had much of an issue with maintaining uh, humidity or, or managing humidity rather in St. Louis. Oh, um, it's, it's very humid in St. Louis yeah. during the summer, but by the time you have the AC jamming and all that kind of balance itself out and for the most part, but I just leave my stuff case. Cause I figured, yeah. you know, that's, that's a, a seal on the outside of that, that guitar that, um, if nothing else will slow down any, any process of it, you know, gaining right, humidity yeah. or, or losing humidity, it'll at least slow that process down. For sure. um, beyond that, of course, it's a perfect shell to um, put humidification or dehumidification devices in yeah. to also, for the same reason, just kind of maintain it. Yeah. Um, those those Diderio or Boveda yeah. humidipacks are very popular because it's a two-way system. If it's too wet, it absorbs humidity. Right. If it's too dry, it lets humidity out practically no maintenance to them yeah that's a great choice a lot of manufacturers really recommend those highly sure. um and and that's probably one thing that should be mentioned is the manufacturer end of it you know yeah. these things are being built in a very very specific climate you know mm -hmm. it's not just an accident by you know Oh well, it's a little dry today. Let's make a guitar. It's yeah. it's it's all very methodical. <laughs> yeah. um, and so when the guitar's finished and goes out into the world, the idea is it won't get shocked by mm -hmm. uh, a, a different environment. Um, so the you know, they're you know the manufacturers are very enthusiastic about you keeping your guitar properly humidified oh, as for well. Sure. Um, so they they don't have to worry about warranty claims on yeah, it. I mean, yeah. which is a valid thing, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I didn't mean to scold you, by the way. 
<laughs> um, One of the things I noticed though, because you brought the Boveda, uh, those Humidipax or Deodario, I think they both, I think they might be the same I thing. I think they are just, the same thing. Just yeah. one's labeled for Deodario, one's, one's not. Right. Um, what I've found, and this is some, a tip I wanted to share with everybody, is that if I use those in conjunction with the Dampit, mm -hmm. I can actually gain significant life out oh. of those Humidipax. Because the Dampit, I think, does a lot of the heavy lifting. Sure. And that's there for the days when I'm lazy, which, as you found out, there's sometimes they those exist. days exist. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. Appreciate your, totally. your thoughts on humidity. Absolutely. All right. I want to thank Matt for his wealth of knowledge and, of course, his stunning, beautiful beard. Uh, it's always a treat to talk to Matt. And if you yourself want to talk to Matt, make sure to contact him at Eddie's Guitars. If you have a question about a custom build, a question about a guitar they have in stock, or you just want to geek out, he is your guy. Matt is, a, uh, as I mentioned before, a wealth of knowledge and just super fun to talk to. Just don't let him know that you haven't been humidifying your guitar because he'll... He'll make you feel bad about it, uh, as you saw there in the video. Uh, now, I do want to go further, but first, let's dig into some comments back from episode 101. Uh, some great stuff. Um, first of all, the first comment comes from Matthew Smith. He says, love your Tyler Childers t-shirt. Big fan. Uh, well, thank you, Matthew. I'm a big fan of Tyler Childers as well, and I'm excited because he just released a brand new album uh, about two weeks or so ago, uh, and we actually featured Tyler Childers back on episode 30. So if you've never heard of him, make sure to check out episode 30. I think you will be absolutely delighted. The next comment comes from Travis N. He says, hearing Pentangle made me think of Fairport Convention. That made a lot more sense when I looked them up and found both were 60s British folk groups. Speaking of Fairport, have Peg Leg and Big Boy featured Richard Thompson as an artist? If not, he'd be a fantastic artist to feature. Well, Travis, we have not featured Richard Thompson yet. However, I appreciate the recommendation. And if you're wondering who Peg Leg and Big Boy are, uh, that's actually Noah and I's blues name. Uh, Noah was lucky enough to draw the name Peg Leg Rivers Fingers. Uh, and no, I, what, no, 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 what no. were you? It's what? the other way. Rivers is the last name. So, oh, so oh. all my kids. Blue's last name is Rivers. Okay. Peg so Leg Fingers Rivers. Peg Leg Fingers Rivers, uh, which makes zero sense. I was lucky enough to draw Big Boy Bradley. B big Bad Boy Bradley? Bad Big Boy? Big Boy Bad Bradley? Yes. It's a lot of Bs. I can't remember the specific order. Uh, so that's what Travis was referring to there. And uh, speaking of blues names, we had a, a quite the hit there in the comments section. Now, a lot of people chiming in with their blues names. Uh, more on that here in a second. But this next comment comes from Don. And uh, <laughs> Don really took the blues names and ran with them. Don says, I watched Wednesday from Boston, Massachusetts. Hashtag Fam Jam. And he goes on to list the band members. Uh, quote, Old Liver Parker on guitar, vocals, and shotted Guinness. His family sidemen, Crippled Eyes Parker on camera, keyboards, and spiked cider. And Bony Harp Parker on computers, harmonica, and PBR. With another strummer now in fiddle training. Don goes on to say, Tony and Noah, thank you again for a fine show. Nailed the trivia before the choices were even listed. Listen to Scrapper Blackwell a few weeks ago on YouTube doing Nobody Knows You When You're Down and Out. Wrote down the lyrics, working out the music. Sniffing some unusual chord stuff there. And thanks to Matt for, quote, that's personal. LOL. And also thanks for the trip down Pentangle Memory Lane. Uh, <laughs> Don was referring to another Ask Matt section where we talked about vintage versus new, and I asked Matt a very personal question. Uh, so thank you, Don, for watching. Thank you for taking the blues names and absolutely running with them. I, I specifically like uh, Old Liver and Crippled Eyes. Crippled Eyes is good because it's, you know, most of the old bluesmen are, are blind. Mm. Blind boy this, blind guy that. But here you have crippled eyes, which just makes me think, you know, it's just a strong glasses prescription. Uh, the final comment for our first round here comes from Trucka Stanley J. And his blues name is Bony Bad Boy Dupree. I like it. Um, and I like it as well. I'm actually, I, I feel like that could be an actual record that I'd find. Bony Bad Boy Dupree. That's kind of cool. Okay, so I wanna, well, I'm <laughs> sorry, but to no, be fair... To be fair, and I will gladly take out my middle name. Okay. Pegleg Rivers is pretty good. I, mean, I like if, Pegleg if you Take Rivers. out the fingers part because yeah. you got the leg and the fingers. Yeah. I think it works. It could be like you know you're. I'd like to massage yours a little bit and be like Pegleg Limpy Rivers, like Limpy yeah. or Limpy Pegleg Rivers. I actually like that a lot more. <laughs> Do you like that more? 
uh, I guess you, I'll hire you as my producer and <laughs> <laughs> my marketing agent. <laughs> Well, that's it for our first round of comments today. Uh, if, if you haven't left a comment on Acoustic Tuesday, I encourage you to do so. They are a whole bunch of fun and you may very well make it in a show. It's easy to leave a comment. Just go to the YouTube link or rather go to the YouTube episode and leave a comment right below, but don't forget to include where you're tuning in from because it's so cool to see where you are all watching the show from. And while you're leaving a comment, please ask yourself the very important question. Am I subscribed to the Acoustic Life YouTube channel? Because if you're not, that's super easy to do. Just click that red subscribe button. Don't forget to click that little gray bell. That'll give you a notification of each and every new video that does get posted. And lastly, please do us a huge favor and like this episode on YouTube if you do indeed like the show. By liking the episode, you're actually helping other guitar geeks find the show. So just by expressing your love for Acoustic Tuesday, you're gonna help another guitar geek discover Acoustic Tuesday. And lo and behold, we're fulfilling the Acoustic Tuesday dream of helping guitar geeks unite. All right, moving on, Noah. I'm gonna get somber for a second. That's actually not somber. I found a podcast that I wanna share with you all. And it took me a second because I've wanted to share this podcast with you for a while. But I didn't want it to be that like, oh, I listened to one episode, I thought it was amazing, and then it turns out the podcast was kind of cruddy. This podcast is awesome. I have put it through its paces and I have thoroughly enjoyed every episode I've ever listened to. What's the podcast? The podcast is called Walking the Floor with Chris Shiflett. And this podcast is Chris featuring uh, a lot of Americana and folk type artists. Now, Chris is actually a member of the Foo Fighters amongst many other bands. He's a hell of a musician himself and he's a very talented interviewer because he lives the musician life. And as he's talking with other musicians, it's kind of like being a fly on the wall, listening to this very cool conversation between two awesome musicians. And just so you could get a taste of what this podcast sounds like, how relaxed Chris is, and how cool of guests he actually gets, I've chosen one of his podcasts, which features Coulter Wall. And here's a very cool statement, rather question from Chris to Coulter, and Coulter goes on to expound just a little bit. So here it is. I always marvel at anybody that can play fingerstyle guitar and sing at the same time. That is like a very admirable that, thing to be able to pull off. Once you get it, you'll never, you'll never forget it. You know, it's just one of those, it's muscle memory thing. Right. right? So that's how I see it. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, uh, I've been figuring out how to, how to, uh, integrate what I do into a band setting. And mm. that's been a lot of fun, um, toying around with. It's a, it's a small, you know, it's me and, and three other, three other folks playing. You got a steel guy out there with you? I got a guy that, that plays dobro, uh, no pedal steel yet. I got a fiddle player who, uh, will play a mandolin from time to time and a bass player and a drummer who's kind of a jack of all trades and he'll come off the drums and we'll do kind of a string band thing. He'll pick mm. up the dobro and play that. Um, but, uh, I'm not ruling out uh, pedal steel for the future because why would you ever do that? You know? Right. Well, all right, there's a quick little piece of the pie that is walking the floor with Chris Shiflett. I got to tell you, some of the guests he pulls in there are really amazing. Uh, not only because of their music, just because of the way that they interact with Chris. It's really a fun listen, and I would encourage you to check out more episodes than just the Coulter Wall one. And uh, to learn more about the podcast, please visit AcousticLife.tv forward slash AT104. You can check out single episodes if you want. There's also a subscribe link there in case you really dig it and you don't want to miss an episode. All right, I've got a killer artist coming up for you. In fact, this is one that Noah and I were just listening to this morning, and even Noah gave it his nod of approval, which I think is what shook down the Egon curl uh, that I referred to at the very beginning of the show. And you need to hear this artist. But first, I want to visit the comments again because I've got more blues names to share and a couple a couple stories that are kind of scary in the acoustic guitar world. Our first comment in round two comes from Cypher Glitch. He says, love your shirt. And I'm not sure which one he's referring to because I was wearing a Billy Strings shirt uh, in this particular segment. Hopefully that's the one. If so, thank you. If, if that's not the shirt, I'm still glad that you love the shirt I was wearing. 
I, I like to think I have really good taste in t-shirts since that's all I wear. It's t-shirts and hockey jerseys. Anyways, uh, to read the comment. Love your shirt, but if I had the money to choose between vintage or custom, personally, I would go custom, even for bluegrassy music. Because after I got used to playing an extended range electric guitar, I found out they are good for a lot more than gent and metal. But I would love to have a fan fret acoustic that was built specifically with open G in mind with a high G four string that has Scruggs tuners for on the fly tuning swaps. Now, Cypher is referring to the Ask Matt segment where I asked Matt, hey, vintage or new? If you had $100,000, what would you pick? And uh, it's very clear that Cypher Glitch here, he, he has a very specific guitar in mind. So I can tell uh, that uh, this individual is, is an extreme guitar geek with huge dreams, which I, of course, encourage and appreciate because I was just thinking of a guitar last night, a Circa OM 18 style. Anyways, I did lose a little bit of sleep over it. I'm just gonna say that. Next comment comes from Enlier5. Who's this silent yet handsome devil I spy here? Found this video while looking for video demos for some small body Larve guitars. Now, what, what on earth are they talking about? Well, there was a YouTube link included in this particular comment and I had to click on it because I wasn't sure what they were talking about. And lo and behold, it's a little bit of a throwback because this was one of the first guitar reviews I had ever done uh, when I was working at the Old Town School music store in Chicago. Now, Noah refers to me in a very specific way. We'll get to that after you see the clip because I want to see if you agree with him or not. So here's the clip. Demoing for us today is going to be uh, Tony Policaster, our instrument buyer here at the Old Town School Music Store. Um, and the first guitar we're going to look at is a Martin 0015. And this guitar is all solid mahogany and it has a satin finish on it. Um, now Noah says that he says, uh, as when I showed him this video, he said, oh, that's round Tony. Or no, did you say pudgy Tony? Yeah. What, I call what did you actually it, uh, say? Yes, I say pudgy tone. Okay, pudgy tone? Yeah, you That's... had this phase where you were pudgy tone. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I've looked back at numerous guitar reviews that I've done for Old Town School, back for the, you know, the acoustic letter days, and it's really interesting to see um, the documentation of the various phases. You know, because I was pudgy, shy, young tone mm -hmm. at the Old Town School. Yeah. And then I became pudgy acoustic letter tone. Oh, that one I refer to you as puffy. Puffy. Yeah, so when you were early acoustic letter... Yeah. ...or somewhere in there, it was puffy tone. Oh, it, now, now, Noah, just for the sake of, of, of the viewers, what's the delineation between pudgy and puffy? I, I don't... I, I, need, I need help as well. Sure. Okay, well, I'll try to be brief. Let me try to describe it this way. Okay. In your younger, pudgy tone days, um, you just had a little bit more mass. Okay. And not as much muscle. Okay. And I think by the time you became puffy tone, yeah. you had since built some muscle. Oh, okay. So then it wasn't as much pudginess as it was more of a puffiness. Hmm. That's the best way I can... I can now, get. Egon, what would you say, where am I at right now? I think you're in an ideal, I think you're in a really good place. <laughs> good um, place tone? We'll, we'll refer to this. Yeah, you're, you're fit tone. Okay. <laughs> you have now become fit tone. Well, thank you, With a Noah. P. It has to be with a P. Yeah, P-H-I-T. Yes. Fit tone? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Moving on to some more comments. Uh, this is a twofer because I was looking up blues names in the comments and I found this one and these two are right next to each other So I just thought oh, I'll feature them both this first one comes from Calvin M. He says hey guys checked out my blues name my initials CJM Sticky fingers Lee no, it seems like everybody else is coming out on top with the blues names except for yours Well, I know his middle name starts with a J. Oh Fair that's right cuz cuz peg leg fingers rivers. There you go uh, The next uh, the next comment comes from rather be walking. He said good show guys from bony boy Davis That's his blues name and thanks for the shout out of scrapper Blackwell, one of my favorite blues guys a bit of history listen to scrapper's own Kokomo blues and decide if Robert Johnson borrowed it for his more famous song, Sweet Home Chicago. Oh, I'll have to do that. I'll have to do a little analyzation there. Uh, the next picker, now, the next picker, the next comment comes from Picker Dad. And this is referring to the Acoustalock system by Music Nomad that I mentioned in episode 101 of Acoustic Tuesday. Really is a device that could save your guitar's life. He said, just to confirm, it doesn't replace a strap lock. It works with and requires a strap lock, right? 
Question, does it work with all strap locks or does it have to be a shaller? Well, let me go ahead and answer these questions right here, right now for the benefit of all of us guitar geeks. It does not replace a strap lock. The Acousta Lock system from Music Nomad is in addition to strap locks you would purchase. And to answer your second question, does it work with all strap locks? No, it's specifically designed for shallower strap locks. So if you get the Music Nomad Acousta Lock system, make sure that you get with it a set of shallower strap locks. It will make the system work. Uh, if you don't have the strap locks, it simply won't work. So keep that in mind. Awesome question, Picker Dad. And thanks for being an Acoustic Tuesday watcher and a Tony's Acoustic Challenge member for that matter. And lastly, I saw this name. I had to pull this comment because the name is Pat Cross. Now I'm pretty sure if my memory serves me correctly, which is about a 50-50 uh, um, wager there, uh, Pat Cross, I think I taught you uh, way back when here in Montana when I was teaching at Music Villa, and I'm pretty sure we worked on uh, a Ryan Adams song off the Ashes and Fire album. Can't remember what it what song it was, but I remember the album. Uh, so if it's you, thank you for leaving the comment. If it's not you, I wanna also thank you for leaving the comment. Here is the comment. When I win the lottery, if, no, when I win the lottery, I want a banner J45. So I'm in the old school club. I wanna know if Toby is a real dog. I've never seen that dog move a muscle in one of Brendan's reports. Just two days ago, I had my guitar strap jump off the hooky bobby thing on the bottom of my guitar. My two buddies were really impressed with the save I made. Yes, I had a hold of the neck. Well, I have one of the Acoustia hooky things on order from one of my local guitar stores. Thank you for keeping Alf on the back of the set. Scrapper Blackwell, one of the greatest blues names. From Missoula, thanks for another great show. Well, thank you, Pat. Thank you for watching and thank you for your comment and question. Uh, Toby is indeed a real dog. I follow uh, Brendan on Instagram or Facebook, one of those things, and I saw footage of Toby actually running through the grass. So it's not a statue, it's not a stuffed animal, and it's not a um, taxidermied dog. It's, a, it's indeed a real canine with a real personality. He just happens to... Um, well, he just happens to sleep during working hours, apparently. So thank you again for all of your comments and questions. If you have a comment, leave it below. If you have a question, leave it below. And of course, don't forget the guitar snows are coming up next episode. So if you haven't gotten your guitar snow shirt, there's a link right beneath this episode. Click on it, order your favorite color, put that shirt on, take a picture amongst all of your guitars, and then go ahead and submit it at acousticlife.tv and you could be featured in an upcoming guitar snow segment. All right, moving on to what we're listening to this week. Now, Noah, um, there's Tony. a lot. There's a lot to unwrap here okay. with this next artist. Uh, I think I think you really enjoyed it when I played it earlier. Uh, yeah. And you said, "Hey, Tony, where did you hear about this artist?" And I said, "Well, this actually came from Acoustic Tuesday viewer Ricky K in Houston, Texas. He submitted this artist at AcousticLife.tv, and he says, love that she's got such a unique approach. Look at her treating that guitar like a xylophone. And is that a shark capo?" Plus, she, she only really started playing guitar after beating the video game Guitar Hero. She's an up-and-coming artist for sure, and I agree completely. In fact, Noah, you made a statement earlier about whenever you hear hammer-ons on the high E string, you think of Antoine DeFore. Low E. Low E string, sorry. Yeah. I wasn't sure which it's a, E it's string. A, it's a particular, it's a specific way of, you know, doing the bass, a little bit of your bass line yeah. chord changes. On, and you're just hammering on that low E string. Uh -huh. You're not plucking it with your right hand. And I don't know why. Every time I hear it done that way, I just go to Antoine. The, <laughs> well, this artist is very much along the lines of Antoine Defour. This artist is Yasmin Williams. She is a young guitarist and one that has an incredible story. But just so you can get a sense of what she sounds like, here's her tune, Restless Heart. say an unorthodox technique for sure. In fact, that particular song got me just enthralled with her playing, her compositions. They're, they're really a, a treat to listen to. It's not, it's not so much um, 
a single repeated phrase. It's, it, I, I really want to call them compositions because she really takes you on an instrumental journey. It's, a, it's awesome to listen to and it's true. She started playing guitar after she actually beat the video game Guitar Hero and uh, created this unconventional approach. And it's just, it, it's so cool. I, I, I oftentimes give the video game thing kind of a hard time, like Guitar Hero, you know, I don't know, I don't see any reward in playing that game. But hell, if it makes you a, a guitar player like ja uh, Yasmin Williams, then, then please play Guitar Hero a lot and then go make music just like Yasmin Williams. Now, to go on, I want you to see some of the diversity that she offers with her guitar playing because this next tune features a bunch of different instruments, all played by her, all played kind of at the same time. This is a tune called Gitka. Well, I hope you enjoyed that particular song. You might be wondering, okay, I dig Yasmin's music. Now, where do I find more of her music? Well, she has one album out. It is called Unwind. It's got a really cool hand-drawn picture on the cover, and you can get that on her website or, of course, at acousticlife.tv forward slash AT104. Also, if you go to that acousticlife.tv website, you're going to see those performances in their entirety, links to buy her albums, and, of course, a link to her website as well, so you can do your own guitar geek digging. Now, uh, I want to mention a couple of other things as well when it comes to Yasmin. Um, if you like her music and you think, gosh, she only has one album out. Uh, first of all, encourage her to make more music because it's, it's downright beautiful. Second, there's other artists that you can check out that are in the same vein. They're not copies of Yasmin, but they're in the same vein, and we've actually featured a few of them before. Uh, Khaki King, back on episode number 33. Antoine Dufour, as I was talking about earlier with Noah, back on episode 25, and Michael Hedges back on episode number 52. So make sure to check them out as well. If you like that instrumental acoustic music, kind of that um, hammer-ons, tapping, alternate tuning type stuff, those are four artists that will uh, certainly wet your whistle, as they say. Well, Noah, speaking of uh, wetting whistles, yes. we've hopped in the boat, we've untied it from the dock, We've made sure that all the provisions were in the captain's deck, and we've grabbed an oar each, and we've set out on a journey across the ocean. Lo and behold, we're approaching a distant island, and Acoustic Tuesday, the boat journey that is Acoustic Tuesday, is coming to a close. Hopefully the uh, people that inhabit the island are friendly and they accept us with loving arms. Hopefully they're guitar geeks. But uh, we do have to um, dock the boat. We have to, what, what do they call it? We have to... Uh, land the boat. We have to uh, bring the boat ashore and um, put this Acoustic Tuesday boat journey to an end. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Now, Do you want me to plan a little bit better? I, I've, I've acknowledged <laughs> that you're actually really good at that. But yes, it struck me that if you pre-wrote these, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they would just be that much more just, like, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I... Can I can I give a a, a call to action if I may? Uh, please, yeah. I'd please. love I'd love to hear uh, viewers how how they would close the show, and uh, <laughs> if someone has a really you know fun or neat idea, a way to, for us to close out the show, I'd be interested to see what they come up with and what you might choose. Uh, I would too, because it certainly would take the pressure off me because what I like to do is I pick a topic and then I just, I just drive it straight off the cliff. <laughs> I take it until the wheels come off as uh, was evident in today's closing, but we're, not, we're actually not totally through yet. Right. Uh, I have the answer to your trivia question, and I, I also have a specific ask of the audience, if, if I could be so bold. Uh, Noah and I have been talking about new segments 
and we have an idea because you know usually we, we review gear and usually we talk about artists and, and of course we dig into the show comments and things like that but there's a lot of controversial acoustic topics out there ones that I've never really breached on the show so if you can think of a controversial acoustic topic please ask the question below say hey Tony what do you think about for example the current state of Gibson uh, or questions along that uh, that vein. We'd love to address some of those questions in a future segment. Uh, and uh, judging by the interest and the amount of questions we get, I think uh, you'll see that segment soon. And I think you'll find it uh, educational, surprising, surprisingly educational. Uh, just and ask the questions, and, and then we'll take it from there. Entertaining, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. entertaining. That's correct. Let's let's go ahead and talk about Guitar Geek trivia, shall we? Here is a quick reminder of what your question was: Which guitarist founded the record label Wyndham Hill, which specialized in instrumental acoustic music? Was it A. Alex DeGrassi, B. Michael Hedges, C. Robbie Basho, or D. William Ackerman? Now, note, all of these names will actually appear in the answer. But if you answer D, William Ackerman, you are 100% correct. Wyndham Hill Records was an independent record label that specialized in instrumental acoustic music. It was founded by guitarist William Ackerman in 1976 and was popular in the 1980s and 1990s. With money borrowed from friends, Ackerman recorded his first album entitled The Search of Turtles Naval. Later, he changed the title to In Search of the Turtles Naval on his own label, Wyndham Hill Records. The second album he released in 1976 was by his cousin, guitarist Alex DeGrassi, followed by one in 1977 by his guitar teacher, Robbie Basho. He left Carpentry to pursue music full-time in 1980. During that year, the label received national attention because of George Winston's first album. Autumn was a solo piano album that helped define the genre, genre of relaxing acoustic music that Ackerman had been creating at Wyndham Hill. He also discovered guitarist Michael Hedges at a concert in Palo Alto and immediately signed him to the label. Other musicians in the catalog were Daryl Anger, Mike Marshall, Liz Story, and the band Shadow Facts. So there you have it, a little of uh, some interesting acoustic music trivia for your pipe to smoke or whatever you do with other, with pipes. Uh, I don't know, put it on the mantle. I'm going to stop now. I'm just going to give you a sneak peek in to see what's going to happen next week on Acoustic Tuesday. Next week, we're going to reveal a very special project or projects that we've been up to. A Texas troubadour that I recently saw in, all of all places, Butte, Montana. And a Guitar Geek movie about one of my personal guitar heroes. Yes, that's going to happen next week on Acoustic Tuesday. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. And for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please visit AcousticLife.tv where you can do a guitar geek deep dive into any topic I've ever talked about on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Thank you much. For, <laughs> thank you much. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. Thank you for being a uh, Wow. Let me start over. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. Thank you for being a guitar geek. And remember, guitar geeks unite. Now I'm going to go work on my enunciation skills. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next Tuesday.